Welcome to your brain. Now the brain is a wonderful thing and our understanding of how it works and how we can use it even more effectively has dramatically increased over the last few years. Advances in research, brain imaging and scientific breakthroughs mean we now know more than ever before about what we can do to get more out of our minds. In this video we will introduce you to six amazing facts about your wonderful brain and how you can use that knowledge to be an even more effective learner. So for fact number one, let's take a tour around our brain to understand the big bits and how they play a part in learning. Now our brain has evolved over many millions of years. So starting with the oldest part of our brain, we have our reptilian brain. This is over 500 million years old. And amongst other things is the part of the brain that detects perceived threats. Next to evolve is the cerebellum, which is the most active part of our brain and is the most dense in terms of the number of neurons it contains. It is this part of the brain that hardwires our skills, habits and attitudes. Now the mammalian brain evolved 300 to 150 million years ago and is also known as the emotional, midbrain or limbic system. It is our emotional centre and importantly for learning is vital for the transference of information into our long-term memory through the hippocampus. And finally, the most recent part of the brain to evolve, doing so approximately 3 million years ago, is the neocortex, the conscious thinking part of the brain. What we now know about the brain means we can create a far more effective learning experience when we create a relaxed yet stimulating learning environment to avoid triggering a threat response and appease the brain's love of novelty. If we engage our emotions and create a multi-sensory experience, our longer-term memory is enhanced. And finally, using all of the cortical skills in our thinking to include colour, rhythm, space and imagination, and not just words, numbers, logic and order, will significantly enhance our learning abilities. Now, fact number two concerns something called neuroplasticity. From the moment we are conceived in the womb, brain cells are growing and developing. For many years, that rapid growth and development was believed to continue for a small window of time after we were born, and then drop off sharply by the age of 20, becoming permanently fixed by the age of 40. It wasn't thought possible for older people to grow new brain cells or make significant new connections between the ones they had. However, recent discoveries have found that new neural cells and neural pathways are generated throughout life and that even older people can make significant and measurable changes in their brain, hence the term neuroplasticity. This means because of neuroplasticity, our brains are capable of learning new information at any age, regardless of what we might think. Now, in brain fact number three, let's have a look at the way our brain cells, or more accurately, the neurons in the brain connect. We have over 100 billion neurons in our brain. They are so small you could get 30,000 to 50,000 on the head of a sharp pin. Groups of neurons connect to each other whenever we learn something new. Information is passed through each neuron by an electrical current, but passed between each neuron chemically, using neurotransmitters across the synaptic gap between each cell. The stronger the connections between cells, the stronger the memory. There is a saying in neuroscientific circles which says cells that fire together wire together. What this means is repeating and rehearsing new information will create stronger connections that will last longer in your memory. Now in Brain Fact 4 we want to tell you about our different learning styles. We make sense of the world using our five senses, what we see, what we hear, what we taste, what we smell and what we feel. These are also the sources of information for when we learn. In knowledge-based learning, we tend to focus more on the inputs of the things we see, things we hear, and the things we do. Much less emphasis is placed on taste and smell when it comes to learning information. So one approach to learning styles is to look at each one of these three senses as a separate channel into the brain, using the terms visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. Whilst you will receive information across all three channels, it is possible you may have a preferred channel to learn information. For example, when you first arrived at your senior school, it was a brand new place for you and you needed to quickly find your way around. Now to start with, if you were given a map of the school layout and that was the best way for you to find your way around, then chances are you have a strong visual preference. If, however, all you wanted to do was ask for someone for directions and listen to what they said, then it's possible you have a strong auditory preference. However, 
it might have been necessary for you to have been physically taken around the school for you to get your bearings. If that was the case, then you might have a more kinesthetic learning preference. However, it doesn't really matter what your preferences are. The important thing when you are learning is to use all three together. The reason is each channel will have its own pathway in the brain. And so if you use all three channels at the same time, the neural pathways associated with that knowledge will be three times as strong. Now, brain fact number five is the importance of focus. The way our brains are wired means we love novelty. We are constantly drawn to the new and fresh and things that changes. And the brain actually rewards us when we do find something new by releasing a brain chemical called dopamine, which is often known as the reward chemical. It is designed to encourage us to be more curious and to explore more. Traits very useful back in the day when we had to regularly seek out food and water. Of course, today we generally don't have to go foraging for food in the same way, but the brain still likes novelty. It's also the reason why you have become bored with this part of the video. Nothing has changed for a few seconds now, other than my voice. And so already you are probably craving some form of novelty to keep your attention and get that dopamine fix that you crave. Here's an important word for you. Focus. So when students are sat down trying to study, the brain needs very little excuse to go wandering off and check their social media accounts, watch a bit of TV, or generally surfing looking for cool stuff online. Students will generally rationalise that they can do more than one thing at once. However, despite all the self-justification and rationalisation, the brain works best when focused on one task and one task alone. Rapidly switching between two or more tasks means neither gets the attention it deserves, and completing both takes much longer than even if you completed one first, then completed the other. So the message here for learning, it's far more effective when your attention is completely focused on that single activity. Now brain fact number six is about the importance of sleep and the role it plays in our memory. Neuroscience is beginning to reveal while regular and sufficient sleep is essential for the brain to learn efficiently. It is showing that during sleep the brain consolidates the memories laid down during the day. It has identified during the day a particular neurotransmitter known as ACH is present in high levels to maintain a wakeful state to allow the storing or encoding of new memories. However, during sleep, low levels of ACH minimize the encoding process and maximize the consolidation of what has already been experienced. Sleep also helps us prepare to learn more and gain new insights, as well as help us to remember what we learned yesterday. So the lesson here is a good night's sleep before an exam will help lay down better memories of what you have learned, provided, of course, you've put the effort in in the first place.